guys welcome back to my channel I hope you're all having an amazing day if you're new welcome I am so happy you found us I'm Lisa and this is creative inspiration how's everybody doing I'm so excited to be back in crafting I took the weekend off I had a couple of things going on as you know my husband's been in the ICU a couple of times within a month and he was feeling good this weekend so we went out and did a little something on Sunday and on Saturday, I was finishing a commissioned art piece, so I appreciate everybody being patient and enjoying the video that was up. Today, though, I've got a great one. We're talking fabric and how you can customize fabric for your journals. Because so many people tell me, hey, you know what? I can't find a fabric to represent what I'm doing, or I don't know. I don't know anything about fabrics. You know, what can I do? So I may give you several options to create your own custom fabric. So come on in and we'll get started. Okay. When I say custom fabric, I mean fabric that is exactly what you want to use. Either in your journal, other crafts you have going on. Maybe you want to put some in your planner. Maybe you want to add something. Maybe you want to do a home craft with it. Whatever the occasion Whatever the occasion, I'm going to give you some ideas. Now, the first one is more geared towards journals, planners, that sort of thing. But it could also go on windows, window coverings. It could go on place. It'd be a placemat. So there is a lot of things you can do with every option that I give you today. And the first one is just simply taking a piece of coffee dyed notebook paper. And I wrinkled it up several, several times. Yes, it's very wrinkled. If you want to iron it after you do this, you are more than welcome. I don't really mind. I think the wrinkle gives it some character. But all I did was wrinkle it up multiple times. And then I brought it to the edge of my desk right here. And I did this up and down on the sides everywhere and you can do this with any paper you choose I just did it with this and it's really soft now I wish you could feel it but here's another trick if this isn't quite soft enough and fabric fabricy feeling enough for you what you can do is add some lotion to it. Add some lotion, wrinkle it up, get the lotion all worked in, and then it will be even softer than it is after wrinkling and rubbing on an edge. And I did this probably about 10 times, but I have a custom piece of paper that actually feels like fabric. Now, if you add the lotion, there is a kind of a caveat to this. If you're going to use this just as like a piece of fabric, maybe for a journal cover, maybe it's just a flip up, whatever. Maybe you're going to use it on a cluster or a tag as just some background. You want something more interesting than just, you know, regular coffee dyed line paper. That's great. Then put the lotion and use it like that. But if you ever plan to write on it, then I would suggest not putting the lotion. It will write, but it's a little harder. So that's up to you. Let me go get a little lotion and I'll just show you what I'm talking about. I wish you guys could reach through the camera and seriously feel this though. It is so much softer than this. Maybe that's a good, does that give you an idea of how actually soft this is? How soft it is? I would blow my nose on this and my nose is very tender. So that's how soft this is. But let's add the lotion to it and we'll see how the writing looks after we add the lotion. I'll be right back. I'm back. Now the one thing to think about with lotion is does it smell? I use a no fragrance lotion because I get migraines. So that is not a factor for me, but it could be for you. So definitely think about that. And it's any lotion. I mean, it's not sponsored. It's just any lotion you get wherever you shop for lotions. So I put just a little drop in my hand and then I'm going to take my hands and just kind of rub them all over the paper, front and back. Like I'm using it like a drying towel now. I'm wiping the 
lotion off my hands. Once you get it in there, it doesn't sit on the top of the paper. It actually soaks into the paper. Now, if you use coffee dyed paper, I will tell you the lotion, though it doesn't smell when I put it on the paper, it brought out the scent of the coffee more. Just FYI there. Okay. So here it is. It's super soft. You can do this again once you put the lotion if you want to. But there is our piece of paper. It's like a paper towel now. I mean, like a Kleenex. It's, it's really soft. Like I said, I would blow my nose on this. So the big test. Can we write on it? Well, let's see. Yeah, see, that's what I thought. Writing is kind of hit or miss because of the lotion. It's maybe not as great as it would be if I wrote on a piece of paper that I didn't add lotion to. But, you know, if that's good enough for you, good. If not, don't add the lotion. It was soft before I added the lotion. The lotion just added in another layer of softness. So now we have a custom piece of fabric that looks like notebook, coffee stain notebook paper. So this is just one way to create custom fabric for your journals. Our second way is to either paint, stamp on fabric ourselves. And it's very easy. I've got two pieces of plain fabric. I've got a little green scrap piece. And then I've got a piece of just muslin cloth. And I just got the muslin because I like to use muslin in my journals. You may like to use fabrics with more vibrant colors, which is why I got the green to show you that it'll work on both. But before I do that, some other fabrics that are good for stamping are canvas. And we'll talk about canvas in a minute. Also, burlap is really good for painting, stamping on. In burlap, in blue jean, you can actually decoupage on. This is a napkin decoupaged onto a piece of blue jean. It's very vibrant, very colorful, and I just love it. And it would look great in a journal as a page, on the cover. Even, you know, as you could do a whole bunch of these and make window coverings. You could make placemats. Put it over to the side and then have your placemat this way. So there's a lot of options for all of the things I'm showing you today. It doesn't just have to be a journal or a planner. So you can decoupage on the fabric that's more sturdy like burlap, canvas, and blue jean. Okay. And then like I said, um, canvas is great. I actually did a video last year where I took an old canvas painting, cut off the, you know, took it off its frame and used that as a journal cover. That's an excellent way. If you go to the thrift store or you're in a estate sale and you see an old painting that you really love, but you're thinking, I'm not going to hang it, so why buy it? But you really, you keep thinking about it and you're like, oh, that would make a good journal cover or I could use that in this journal. But I hate to cut up paintings. I will tell you, as an artist, I would rather you buy my painting, cut it up, and let it live in your journal, your planner, whatever, as something else than see it go unloved in a thrift store or even maybe end up in a trash bin somewhere. So that's always something to consider is those paintings, those canvas paintings you see in thrift stores, estate sales, Grab them if they're reasonably priced. Now, sometimes they're priced high, but it's not because of the painting. It's because of the frame, and that's something else to keep in mind. So you might get a two-for-one deal. You buy it, and you pay a little more, but you can use the painting as something in a journal, a planner, or another area around your home, and you could put something that you love and want to hang on your wall in the frame. Just an option for you. Now, something else that you can stamp or paint on are vintage linens. Now, this one's in really good shape, so I myself would not stamp on this one. But a lot of times, I find vintage linens 
that have stains on them. And what better way to cover up a stain and make the linen useful again is to put some paint or some stamping over it or a combination. You could also use spray inks, whatever you your thing is, do it. You could also add a little paint and then draw something and do a, an easy embroidery and cover up the stain as well. So if you see some vintage linens and you think, oh, that would go good in a journal, but it's got that ugly stain, don't blow it off, please. Because if you don't buy it, nobody else is going to buy it and it's going to go in the landfill. And things like vintage linens have stories behind them. They were somebody's loved item and that's why it has a stain on it. Somebody loved it enough to use it all the time and it got dirty and it couldn't come clean. So bring it home, paint over it, stitch over it stamp over it and create your own memory, your own keepsake from that vintage linen. Now, I'm going to show you stamping and painting on these and then I've got another way to create custom fabric after this. I have to go get my stamps. I'll be right back. Okay, I grabbed the stamps. Sorry, I keep thinking I have everything I need and I don't. So I grabbed some stamps, I grabbed some black ink and some more stamps. And I wanted to say about ink color, do what you want. I'm going to use black just so it shows up really well and you can see how good a stamp will work. If you want to use colored inks of your choice, you know, colorful inks are going to look really pretty. But whatever colors go with your journal, obviously, is what you're going to use. Okay. I'm going to use this. Okay, I'm going to use this stamp. It's a kind of lady. And I'm just going to put most of her on my ink pad here. And I say most because this is just, I want you to see, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, I'm just here to give you inspiration. But I do need to make sure it gets inked enough. Move the ink out of the way. Just place your stamp just like you would on fabric wherever you want it. Push it down. And then pull it up. And it looks beautiful. You can create something around this. It can be a page in a journal. Whatever you want it to be. It's that easy. And just to show you. It will work and show up just as good on a more vibrant piece of fabric than just plain muslin. So let me get one of these stamps. I'm going to do flower power. Plus I wanted to show you rubber stamps and the, these stamps. I forget what they're called, but these stamps as well. So we'll put that up there. Okay, it's good and inked up. Same thing, get your, put it wherever you want it. Push it down. And pull it up. And it looks just as good on a colorful piece of fabric as it did on the muslin. So, that's another way you can create custom fabric. Another way you can create custom fabric is to take a piece of fabric, and I like the umbrellas, but the other side is plain because all you see is the fabric coming through on the other side. So if I wanted to use this as a page in my journal or something where you're going to see both sides of it, one side's really cool, but the other side's kind of ugly. So, And you can do this on plain muslin. You can do this on any fabric of your choice. This just happened to be the piece I picked. Now what I'm going to do is kind of put this on. I'm going to cut the fabric in half because I just need to show you on a little piece. And I want to protect my desk. Because I get it dirty enough without not protecting it. And this is going to use just Mod Podge and paper scraps. So here's my piece of fabric. And what I'm going to do is, before I do anything else, I'm going to put a good coat of Mod Podge on the back. See, here's the front, real pretty. There's the back. It's just the front pattern coming through. So I'm going to 
open my Mod Podge. So all I'm going to do is coat the back with a layer of Mod Podge. And that's why I laid down the parchment paper behind it because the Mod Podge soaks through fabric. If you've never Mod Podged onto fabric, it soaks through just like water and paint and everything else. So when you paint your fabric, make sure it's on a surface that can be, you know, on the other side. I would recommend parchment paper or foil, cardboard that you don't care anything about, something like that, or watercolor paper. That way you have like paper that you can use later. Oops, and I just got all of my hands. Okay, now you're going to come in and you're just going to collage paper down. You can collage it however you want. You can make your own design. You can, you know, follow a certain pattern. And then I'm going to put those down. Then I'm going to come in and add some colors. And I think I want to add... No... And you don't have to go all the way to the end if you don't want to. You can totally up to you. And if you're layering paper over paper, which is great, just be sure that you um, get all the Mod Podge in there. Okay? Alright, so I've got all my paper layer down. So now I'm going to come back with all Mod Podge and just coat this whole thing heavy. And if I have paper on top of paper, I'm going to pick it up and get Mod Podge underneath it as well because I want it to stick to the paper too. Now you can do this in layers. You could do your first layer and then if you want to come back and do a layer of Mod Podge over, you know, more and more paper, that's certainly an option as well. But since this is a video, I'm just trying to, you know, show you the quickest way so we don't end up with a our video and you might have to put more Mod Podge on your fabric because it might get a little dried out while you're laying your papers kind of need to know your pattern beforehand because you kind of need to move now you'll let this dry and then you'll apply one more piece of or one more layer of Mod Podge on top. See this came out so I want to make sure I get under here because it takes a lot of Mod Podge for this. So you might want to make sure too that you have a new thing of Mod Podge or you know go get some more. And if you want it to be shiny, you know, use gloss moss, Mod Podge. Well, I can't talk. Or if you want it to be matte, use matte. But anyway, the reason you use something like that, because it did literally soak through. When this dries, though, you will have a very cool piece of fabric that's paper on one side and fabric on the other. And you can see the finished dry paper fabric combo here with the Mod Podge at the end of this video, of course. Because it's going to take this just a second to dry because I am coating it. Because you don't want any layer of your paper peeling up. So anywhere you see bubbles or holes forming, you need to go back in with Mod Podge to get down. So we're going to let this dry and we'll come back to this in just a bit. Because what you're going to, well, what you're going to do, once this dries, you're going to kind of crumple it up to get that same softness and fabric feel from the paper on this side that you have from the fabric on the other side. Plus, all this Mod Podge is soaking through the fabric, so you kind of want to break it up on the fabric side, but it won't loosen on this side. Come back and you can see what I mean. We're going to let that dry. Okay. Our last option for custom fabric is online to literally create custom fabric. 
the cost I don't know we're gonna check it out together here's what I would say though if you're gonna do it online you have to order so much so you're probably gonna want to create a fabric that not only can you craft with and you might want to use in multiple crafts but also something that maybe you're gonna use in your home somewhere now this is not sponsored by any of these companies this one I know, Spoonflower. Now I'm going to show you one more that I do not know. So before you order from any of these companies, I am not endorsing them. And you need to do your own research. I am just showing you that they are out there and they are definitely available. Sorry, this glue drives me nuts. So Spoonflower Fabric. You can get fabric from them that's probably different than you find in your own place or you can design your own fabric and sell it on their sites which is kind of cool if you want that option can you design and buy it though I'm sure you can Design challenges, design tools, selling and commission, seller's agreement. Okay. Turn a piece of your art into fabric, wallpaper, or home decor. No minimal order necessary. Oh, create one of a kind keepsakes from handwritten recipe tales to family photos. Earn money designing patterns by making your art for sale in the marketplace. Okay, so you can design your own and purchase it. Then if you want to sell it to the public, you can. They say there's no minimum order. It's totally up to you. And then you would just follow and go through and see. You would just follow the directions, go through and design and see if it's really true. I, like I said, I do not know. And I get enough junk email. But Spoonflower is one option. Another option. And I just search creating custom fabric online. Now another option. I don't know anything about this company. I'm not promoting them. Print your own custom fabric. Our print your own fabric service is perfect for craft projects, clothing designers, and even fashion students. So you can look at bags of love and figure out is this something you might want to pursue farther. And let's see, fabric and other printing. So anyway, there are options online for creating custom fabrics as well. Where you go and your price range and all of that, again, is totally personal and up to you. Even if you would want to do that, I like doing these home methods better. I mean, maybe they're not perfect and maybe they're not, you know, but I like the stamping and the painting or painting a photo or painting a picture on canvas and cutting it out and then using that using your own artwork or if you have a friend or family member that paints get them to paint and use that as your fabric for your journal what you know we all have multi-talented friends out there and it's always a great thing when we get to use them okay now as this is drying you can see it's just like fabric it's just as flimsy just as good but it's Designed on one side, you created a reverse to your fabric, and it looks cool. So this is always an option, too. I use glossy. As you can see, it makes it super glossy. It's Mod Podge Gloss Luster, and I would have preferred matte, but I actually don't own any Mod Podge matte. So if you're going to do this and you want it to be matte, just know it's all in the Mod Podge you buy, and it'll look, like, perfect. And then again, this could be a page in a journal. Now you have two great pages. This could be a lift up page. This could be on a cover. If you just wanted to use this side of it, you know, it could be whatever you want it to be. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video about creating your own custom fabrics. I hope I gave you some great ideas, some great options. If you create anything, tag me in your story so I can see it. I would love to know what you create. Thank you for being here. As usual, I super appreciate all of you. 
and tell your friends I would love to grow my channel. It means more to me than you will know. So if you could share, I would, you know, it would mean a lot. Thanks for being here today, guys. Take care. And we have some great videos coming up for you during the week. Not only custom fabric, I have some more ideas for some cool custom tape and custom stickers. Plus, we're going to do some cool scrapbook techniques in our journals. I'll see you on Wednesday.